Hello, hello everybody and welcome to my art channel. I'm Tigrex Jaws and today I'm going to be showing you how to color the way that I color. The program that I'm using is Photoshop CS6 and show you a very handy method in which makes coloring a whole lot easier. I'm not 100% sure if my method is going to work on all art programs, but at least you'll learn something and then you can implement that on the work that you do. I always start off with a blank canvas, transparent, white, and dark. The Walking Dead. <laughs> with the dark, I like to take from the background and stick it to the foreground. Right now we're going to stay to white. I picked an image that we can use, and so I have its specific outline. I also made a swatch based off the colors from the original artwork. Anyone who doesn't know what a swatch is, it's basically selected colors that we will use for sections of the artwork, like the hair and the skin and the armor and such. We're gonna make a new layer in the colored section, and then we're gonna pick what area we want to color first. I'm thinking we're going to do the skin first. So let's name the skin and we'll pick out the color. You want to go with not too dark, not too light. You want to go for a medium. So we're going to choose the third line in. We're going to choose a hard brush. You don't want a soft brush. Hard brushes will give you a cleaner line with your line work. And we're going to make sure we're on the layer and then we're going to fill it in. It's okay to be messy. What you want to do is to color in all the skin, get everything you can, and then you can clean it up afterwards. Now that we have all the skin colored in, we want to start cleaning up the lines. So with a hard eraser, we're going to downsize our brush and then clean it up. You don't have to clean up the hairline because the hair is going to be on a layer above. But what you do want to do is clean up the line or the color that's touching the white. Um, our skin layer is the base layer. It's the lowest on the chain. So you don't have to worry too much about it touching the clothes, mainly just touching the white. We're going to fill in this little part here that we missed, and then we're going to clean it all up. We're now going to make a new layer and call it hair. Here we go. We're going to make sure that the hair layer is above the skin layer because the skin layer is the base. We're going to take the medium color of the hair and we're going to fill in the hair with a hard brush. Once again, it's okay to be messy, but you do want to get as much hair as you can. So it doesn't matter if you go over the skin, we'll clean that up later. Lots of people think it's quite daunting to draw over line work like this and color over line work like this, especially when you have little strands of hair, but we'll get to that later. I'm not really feeling this ear, so let's get rid of that ear. And uh, there, the ear is gone. Now we're going to clean up the lines. This time you want to be a little bit more clean. You want to make sure that you can clean up all the lines here. What I'm doing in the hairline area is I'm going above the choppy part of the hair. The reason is because what we're trying to do is we're trying to block out the hair. The strands of hair we add later after all the color has been filled in, all the shading and everything like that. Right now we just want the hairline to be proper. We're going to compare it between the skin as well. We make sure to clean up the lines and then we're going to compare the two and make sure that the skin layer can be seen underneath and that there's no weird awkward white spots between the two layers, the pink and the tan skin. 
we're going to make another one called leather. This one needs to be between the hair and the skin. Then we're going to fill this one in as well. It's going to be underneath the hair, but it's going to be over top of the skin. When you clean it up, you do want to make sure you're really clean with the lines that are touching the skin because it is over. You don't have to worry so much about the pink because it is under. And it's not super necessary to clean up on top of the armor. The armor will be above the leather line, but that is completely up to you whether or not you want to be super clean or not. I find sometimes bleeding underneath another layer actually helps with the coloring style, but it really does depend on your preference. Once again, we're going to pick the medium color, this time of our armor. So we're going to make a new layer and of course name it armor. It is going to be under hair, but above leather as it is more prominent. And then we're going to fill it in, including all the other layers as well. Let's speed it up a little so you can enjoy the process. done with that we're going to turn on the dark layer this is going to show a lot of imperfections we're going to press ctrl u and we're going to turn up the gradient or the light to a higher percentage so we can see what needs to be cleaned it's going to be very prominent what's going to be cleaned because the bleed over from the colors is going to show right through the outlined work so we're going to quickly clean up all those excess lines as you can see and make them a lot more clean and presentable. As you can see, the armor is also quite dirty. So with all the layers now clean, we're going to select them all and we're going to give them a color. This one, I'm going to give them red. Now that we have them all selected, we're going to pull them down and copy them through the duplicate layer option. We are going to give them a new color and we're going to make it darker. We're going to make it mm, purple or violet or whatever. Uh, this will be our shadow base. Then we're going to place them with their corresponding layers and it's going to just make it easier for us to tell which ones we're going to be using for shading. Now using control U, we can go all the way down and it goes to black, but what we want is all the way up that goes to white. We're going to do that now with all the other ones as well, really quickly. What this basically does is it adds a layer over top that we can now shade on. We now want to take 
a black color, but we don't want to go straight black, we want to stay to red. Going to black won't allow us to change the variant of the color levels. Um, if you go to a darker red, you can change the color and the lightness in the color spectrum rather than the black and white spectrum. We're now going to select them all and we're going to lock the layers. This is going to prevent us from drawing outside the lines. Let me show you. Here's an example. We're going to take the hair layer and we're going to draw inside the layer. See? It doesn't bleed outside. If we unlock the layer, however, let me do that real quick. We're going to unlock it and we're going to be able to draw over top. Let's lock it again and look, we can draw inside. As long as you're selected on the right layer and it's locked, you don't have to worry about all that ugly and unnecessary bleeding of your colors. Now right now, I want to try to figure out where the light is coming from. It's either from the right or from the left. Or for this piece, I'm going to try to see if I can put it between the two. I want the light to be going from the top, but downwards. So towards her eye level, towards her chest level, and the rebounding light as well. We want to remember that light reflects and that one directional lighting, although it can be very cool, doesn't make sense if the character is outside. Even though we haven't drawn a background for her, it doesn't mean that there wouldn't be some kind of atmospheric reflection. So we want to make sure that we have that. Now what I'm doing here is I'm putting like a straight black line where I think a shadow would be. It's okay that it's straight and black because what we're doing is we're going to go to blur and the gush and blur and we're going to kind of push the darkness around. I'm going to push it a little bit more so it spreads um, where you can see where the darkness of the shadows are and where the sun is actually touching her scalp area. And I'm going to do the same thing with the skin. I'm leaving a tiny little bit of space between the outline side and her face, primarily because our skin can be quite reflective, not like glass, but a little bit more than normal. And when you take the blur, you want to be able to push it around. And if it's completely on the side, it's going to a little bit or look a little bit wonky. So we're going to be a little bit less dark with it. Let's blur this right now. And she is tan, so I'm going to allow the color to be that dark. We can fix it later and we'll go through all the other ones real quick and do the same thing. not really happy with how the face turned out, so we're going to add a little bit more shade. That's better. Now we're going to add a little bit more detail to the shadow layer by adding little tiny bits of dark variants to where I think the shadows would be more prominent. And we're going to do the same thing to the face. Um, the brush strokes are quite blotchy. That's okay. What we're trying to do right now is get the general darkness in levels to the overall picture. Um, we want to make sure we know where her face indents, where the hair would cast a shadow from the direct sun, um, and where the parts on her face would be shadow. Um, her nose would be not the full nose, but underneath, 
um, you would get the crevice of her eye and eyelid next to the bridge of her nose um, and the roundness of her cheek. I'm adding a lot more shadow there, but in the end, we will be blurring it. We just want to add a little bit more detail, um, make the face a little bit more indented, and it will make it a little bit more realistic. Um, right now it looks like she has a beard, but that's fine because it, it'll be fine later on. We just want to make sure that we keep the direction lighting in check. While we do all this, make sure that anything that would cast a shadow can cast a shadow. We're going to take off the underlay or the overlayer right now so we can tell where the shadow should be with the arm. Um, and then once we're satisfied, we're going to blur it and make it nice and clean. Here we go. Now it's smoother and we can go back a little bit more and detail it. We're going to switch to white now and make the white variants. We're going to whiten up the eyes, make them glow a little bit more. The forehead, the cheeks, the nose, the lips, um, some of the arm where the sun would hit directly. Also want to keep in mind is that when you're on the purple layer the shadow layer you want to use your dark color and you want to use your white you never want to use erase erasing is pointless because what you're doing is you're adding levels to your shade layer so anything that you want bright you add white anything you want dark you add your dark but there's no need to erase anything uh, you can erase once you have a flat layer um, and a final image, but don't be erasing here. It actually, actually messes up uh, how the layer works. So only use your two base colors. If you want to erase something, just backspace. It is a Photoshop or it is in our programs and you have that liberty. So it's best to practice not erasing this time and just trying to try to figure out where your values are in the image. about cloth is if it's see-through you want to make sure that the cloth layer that's on top of another cloth layer in your art is darker than the rest of it so we're just gonna make the one side darker and the little tip on the right a little darker now we're going to select all these layers and we're gonna select multiply this is gonna make the whites become transparent and then all the shadow and shade that we have done is on top. Um, so whatever value is darker will show up as darker on your base color and does a lot of the shadow work for you, which is really, really handy instead of having to completely shade. Our next step is to go on all the red layers of the skin and the hair and everything else and start using the darkest tones first and the lightest tones last to highlight and add a little bit more dimension, a little bit more roundness to the image. With the skin layer, as you can see, I'm adding the darker shade, which is adding a little bit more reds to the skin tone because skin's not all one color. There's yellows and reds and all kinds of stuff. So with this, I'm, I'm adding the shine and it has more yellow to her skin and if the sun were to hit her not only would her skin be reflecting the yellow or the rays of the sun it would also be reflecting her hair and whatever else was around her 
um, and then always remember to brighten up the eyes. Uh, you can make them a little bit more uh, shaded later, but I like to brighten them up to make their face pop a little bit more. And this is more of the fun part. You add the eye color, um, you add more of the face dimension um, and the shine. Um, kind of like putting makeup on a face. Here is where we start adding brighter colors to the eyes. We start adding the eyeshadow um, and the overall makeup to beautify the character a little bit more. Not that she's not already pretty, but we add things like the blush, the cheeks, the lipstick, or at least a little bit of blush to the lips. Um, Things that make her a little bit more cute. Um, she already has highlights on her face, but we just want to add a little bit more color, just a tiny little bit more pop to make her face draw the viewer in. We'll also be touching up her eyebrows. Uh, we don't do this in the hair layer. We do this in the skin layer at the end of her face touch-ups, so at least we don't have to worry about the skin layer, in the beginning at least. We're going to get a, another brush and we're going to start adding the different shines and colors to the hair to add a little bit more dimension as well. Adding the darker shades first, like I mentioned, and then we're going to slowly go higher, higher, higher into the lighter um, swatch colors. Uh, as you can tell, two of my swatch colors are a super high color of pink and a kind of yellow, primarily because I'm gonna add a little bit more shine to her hair um, so it looks like it's more kissed by the sun, um, and just add a little bit more dimension overall. <music> like that we have a lot more dimension to the image adding the shine with the armor I added more reflective layers so I added a shine to the outer side of the armor to add like a metallic type of shine or sheen or whatever and then I started fiddling around with the levels of the hair and the color of the hair I didn't really like the bright pink it was, and then I changed it. And then I'll just let you guys watch a little bit more as I do my final touches, and then you can see the final image um, after I've cleaned up all the lines and everything else, and end up with a final product. Thanks for joining me. Remember to subscribe, like the video, comment, and ring that bell for any future videos. See you next time. Bye.